Hello and welcome to another Advent of Code. We're back for day nine. In this one, we're going to be dealing with a bit of a number puzzle. Uh, this is kind of what our input looks like. Each of these numbers represents a height, so it's kind of like a topological map, so to speak. And the problem has us finding any of the minimas in the first part. So a minima, uh, this is one here, for example, either is bounded by an edge or by numbers that are larger than it. So this one has bigger numbers all around it. I believe there's another one right here. Uh, I don't remember the other ones are. <laughs> uh here's one anyway there's 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 four of them in here um and part one is to find the minimas now whenever i see a problem that involves plotting coordinates i use this clever trick that uh seems to save me a whole bunch of time and thinking because uh, there's kind of two tricky things about plotting points one is picking a coordinate system and like building the arrays for that so usually you you would think about using a double uh, a doubly nested array, like a two-dimensional array. We're going to actually avoid that because I find two-dimensional arrays kind of confusing to worry about. And the other issue is going out of bounds. And bounds checks are also annoying, so we're going to use a little trick that avoids both of those. Uh, now, in this, uh, you know, the highest number we're ever going to see is a nine. So I am going to treat out of bounds as being exactly identical to nine. And the way we're going to do that is by using a default dict. And now I've done a video on that, so I will link that in the description. Uh, but basically, we're going to have a coordinate, and it's going to be a default dict. And the key for the default dict is just going to be the coordinate pair. So we're not having two-dimensional dictionaries. We're just having one top level that has a tuple. And this, again, avoids needing that nesting. And we're going to default the value to 9, because that's going to be the biggest number that we're going to see here. Uh, you could actually default this to a larger number if you wanted. Nine works great uh, for part two. <laughs> uh, when I actually solved this in reality, I used sys.maxsize, which is just a very large integer that's kind of built into Python. Um, but it, it doesn't represent the maximum integer because integers are arbitrary width in Python. But it happens to be a large, large integer. So I often use it as a sentinel value. OK. So uh, the first thing that we need to do is plot these points into here, and that's pretty easy. Um, and you can pick either yx or xy as your coordinates. Uh, I've recently been finding that yx is slightly more convenient, but slightly less conventional. Uh, so that's really up to you. Um, input enumerate. We're going to be using enumerate here to get both the coordinate position as well as um, the value here, we get the, the line and the y coordinate, and then we're going to have for x uh, character in enumerate line. So this gets us our x and y as well as our character here, and then we're just going to insert that into our coordinates dictionary. Um, I will use x, y for the sake of the video, but I actually used y, x in my real code, but it doesn't actually matter. Um, so this is all we need to do to plot all the points. Um, so once we have done that, we need to solve part one. And part one is to find any local minimas, which means every point around it. And when I say around it in this case, it's only considering the direct directions. It's not considering diagonals. Uh, so that, that's, that's another part of the problem that was a little bit tricky to read. Um, and for this, what I usually do is I make a specialized function, um, which I'm typing import generator i make a specialized function for the adjacent points uh so do x int y int this is going to be a generator a generator of tuple uh oops of tuple int int so two two element tuples and i'm just going to yield each value that's going to represent the the four points around it so uh, we can start with x, y, and we're going to do x plus 1, minus 1, y plus 1, y minus 1. So this is just kind of a convenient helper function to get us those coordinates that are near the current position. Um, okay, so let's find our local minimas. And we're going to sum up all the values, and we add 1 to each of them. So we're going to have a total here, and we're going to do 4 
uh, x, y, n in chords.items. We're going to loop over every single coordinate that we have. Um, there is a slightly more clever way to do this. I believe binary search allows you to find uh, local minimize, but I didn't do it that way. I just brute forced it because it's fast enough. <laughs> might, as, might as well do the easy readable way to do it. Um, okay, so we want to check if all of the ones around this current point are greater than this value. So we're going to do all um, chords point or point in adjacent uh, x, y, oops. <laughs> Set one thing, type another. Uh, if the coordinate point is greater than n for every point around this. Now, those that are <laughs> paying attention have noticed that this might go out of bounds. We might actually get negative one here. Or we, yeah, we might get negative one here or something that's beyond the end of the, the um, coordinate pairs. But that's actually fine because what we've set up here with our default dict is if it goes out of bounds, if we get something that doesn't exist, it's just going to give us back the number 9. Uh, and so 9 will always be bigger, well, greater than or equal to things. Because um, I, I, there's no way that 9, there's no way that 9 could be a minima because, um, you know, we only have one digit numbers here. So this, this little trick here saves me having to do any bounds checking at all here, which I think is great. <laughs> Okay, so if all of them are greater than n, that means we add n plus 1, and this, I don't know why Eric did this, <laughs> cost me like two minutes on my solve, because uh, I didn't read, but um, plus equals n plus 1, so that sums up all those values, and at the end we get print part 1 is our total here, and if we run that, uh, let's get over to this tab. Oops, spoilers. <laughs> Why is spell I typoed? Annotations. There we go. What is that? Oh, and this should be chords. I fix a few little typos. Dictionary changed during iteration. Right. So this is the other tricky part about um, default dict is this is actually going to change the size. And there is a cheaty way to do this. You can just eagerly grab all of the items. This is actually pretty slow because it, um, because it unfortunately uh, <laughs> it does a full copy of everything instead of uh, lazily iterating through things. So this will work if I put a colon here. Um, this will work, but this is kind of inefficient. The way to get around actually changing the dictionary size is to kind of avoid using default dict. Default dict is actually kind of screwing us a little bit here. And just use dot get with nine. Um, so that'll avoid it creating the value if it doesn't exist. Um, but anyway, so default dict didn't actually save us much there, but it will save us in part two. Um, okay, so that's part one. Let's talk about part two. Part two says the minimas have basins around them. So basically what we need to do is find all of the values that would get filled if we were to do like a flood fill. You can imagine like a, you know, a paint tool. And the nines in this case are gonna be considered boundaries. So you basically start from this point and iterate outwards from it. You can either use depth first or breadth first. Um, I chose to use depth first. I did this without using recursion. I used the same pattern. <laughs> I basically try and avoid pa recursion in these because I find it harder to read. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I did that. Okay, so um, for part two, we need to know all of these points. So I am also just going to record those points here uh, in a list, and that way we can uh, keep track of them for part two. So we're going to do minimas.append uh, x, y. Okay, so for part two, we need to fill all of the basins. So we're just going to do four, um, do I actually need this? Yeah, we do. Four x, y in minimas, and we are going to try and fill around them. So what I usually do for this is have a scene set. These are the ones, that way we don't backtrack on things that we already have, so we can uh, easily find those. Uh, we have a to do, these will be the points that we are going to uh, traverse outwards from, and then we need a a loop. 
This is going to be our search loop. Uh, the to do is actually going to represent our stack here instead of doing a recursion with the stack. We're just going to use um, a data structure instead. And uh, x comma y equals to do dot pop. So this is going to represent the function call in our recursion. We're going to add x and y to our scene. And uh, we are now going to do the same adjacency that we did before. For a point in adjacent uh, x, y. And this is kind of our recursion step where we're figuring out the next points to look at. And so we want to say if uh, chords x, y. Well, first, we want to check if it's not in scene. If point's not in scene, because we don't want to redo the same point. And if the point is not equal to 9, then we're going to add that point in because uh, it, you know, we don't find a boundary and we haven't seen it already. To do dot append point. And so that will build up all of our, um, I mean, this, this little recursion will build up our entire filled set inside of scene. And we need to keep track of uh, the three largest basins. So we need to keep track of all of them here. Uh, basins equals this. And at the end of this loop, we're just going to append the length of this scene set into basins. Basins append lin of scene. And so at the end, we should get a series of basins here. Let's try that. Set is not callable. Uh, where is that code? Oh, scene dot add. <laughs> yes, indeed, it is not callable. Uh, okay, so we get four basins here, three, nine, 14, and nine. And on the advent of code website, they kind of draw these out. Um, so I'm, I'll let you open that up and look at that. Uh, but for this, we need to find the three largest values. And the easiest way that I could think of to do this was just sort the basins and then multiply the last two. Part two is basins minus one times basins minus two times basins minus three. Um, this has a little bit of extra runtime overhead in that we're keeping track of every single base in here, whereas you could just keep track of the three largest ones and then not have to do <laughs> this, uh, this sort or that. Um, that would be slightly better in space overhead, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, and after that, we get 1134, which is our expected value. Anyway, that is how I approached this problem. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you found a new trick with default dict. Uh, and I will see you around for the next day.